if it was your son or daughter that was dying or had died, how would you feel then? And a lot of times what happens is a lot of people, they, they look at the, those that are on drugs and those that are on alcohol have life controlling problems. And they look at them as, you know, well, those are the outcasts of society, but they're a life. There's somebody's daughter, somebody's son, and we want to be able to give them the hope that maybe there's a little bit of ray of hope that can, can help them if they want to help themselves. What's happening with the drug business that's out there today is there's a lot of fentanyl that is being mixed in with the drugs and what's happening, a lot of people are overdosing and dying. And so we have to administer what's called Narcan in order to bring them back to life. And, you know, after a couple of times, people begin to realize that, you know, maybe there's no hope. And we want to be able to instill hope in the community to let them know that there are programs that they can get involved in. We've always had an opioid crisis uh, going back to, it's a global uh, holistic problem. I think the United States started getting onto it around 1903 when they started passing the Pure Food and Drug Act and uh, Harrison Narcotics Laws. So before that, even in the 1800s, uh, we were looking at an opioid problem with morphine, later on with heroin. Uh, so addiction to opioids has never been a new thing. Uh, we're recognizing it now because of the widespread prescription of painkillers and the concept of pain as a disease in and of itself. Uh, and so when doctors are encouraged to prescribe um, medication to kill pain as if it's a disease in and of itself uh, in large amounts with really no limit, uh, that can be a problem for people. It's not this gradual downward slope, it's a drop off of a cliff. Recently with the fentanyl that has been replacing you know, the, the opioids that came before it and the fentanyl hitting the streets, especially the fentanyl that's manufactured in China, uh, it takes minuscule amounts on a microgram scale instead of a milligram scale to poison somebody fatally. And that's what we're looking at now. People that were used to being able to use a certain amount are now using uh, a fraction of that amount and it's enough to kill many people, not just one. It's a life controlling problem. Uh, it affects socially, it affects families, it affects uh, work, it affects self-worth. It takes a toll on the person's thinking and decision-making to the point where, you know, sometimes you'll ask the question to yourself and you'll say, why is it that, you know, they just can't stop? And a lot of it is because the addiction itself has caused them such a dependency on it that their, their overall rational thinking is pushed aside just to satisfy that, that strong desire that they're, they're having for that drug. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take one hand and put it on his forehead, the other hand under his neck, and tilt his head back, okay? Yeah. That's going to open up his area, help him breathe a little bit better. Yeah, bend his neck back. Okay. Just tilt his head back gently, okay? Okay. 